I'd like to talk about drums, or rather about a particular drum beat. I'm sure you've heard it dozens of times before. It's a ubiquitous piece of the pop culture soundscape. It's been used as a rhythmic backdrop in everything from late 80s gangster rap to corporate America's recycling hip-hop forms to sell things like Jeeps and blue jeans to suburban America. In fact, just last week, I saw a TV commercial for a pharmaceutical company where this drum beat was used to promote some sort of purple pill. It's been used so much, I might argue it's now entered into the collective audio unconscious and did so about three or four years ago. It's been somewhat glossed over now, but it has quite a history to it. This particular drum beat, or rather this break beat, as it is more accurately called, or even more simply just break, well this particular break is called the Amen, the Amen break. Here's what it sounds like. Here, I'll play it again. Now this break, despite its popularity and use over the last decade or so in contemporary culture, dates back almost 40 years. The Amen Break is a small piece of, and gets its name from, a song released in 1969 titled Amen Brother. Amen Brother was recorded by a funk and soul band who called themselves the Winstons. Amen Brother is the B-side of a single released by the Winstons titled Color Him Father. Color Him Father went on to win a Grammy Award for the band, becoming one of the top 100 hits of 1969. It's probably the track for which the band is best known. However, it's the B-side, Amen Brother, that has that classic drum breakdown right in the middle of the song, which makes it perfect for sampling. Here it is again, with more of the rest of the track included to give it context. <laughs> So, Amen Brother was recorded, it was released, it was played, it came and went. Nothing terribly remarkable about it. However, the drum loop in the middle of the song was resuscitated with the advent of the sampler in the 1980s. Just a brief aside about the sampler, this was a machine about the size of a VCR that allowed its user to record any sound into it for quick playback and arrangement. The sampler, as well as the turntable, were principal tools largely responsible for the birth and development of hip-hop. With a sampler, any drum beat, any guitar riff, any sound that could be recorded could be used as part of a new composition, a new contextualization. Nowadays, almost all commercially produced music has been at least in part realized with a sampler. But hip-hop and other electronic-based music genres pioneered the creative use of samplers, and the Amen Break was one of the first drum samples to be experimented with. Here's an early example, the track Words of Wisdom by New York duo Third Bass released in 1989. And here's another example, NWA's track, Straight Outta Compton, also from 1989. Finally, here is Mantronics with King of the Beats from 1990. In these cases, a one-bar loop of the Amen was used to create the rhythms. That is to say, it's a fairly straightforward use of the break. As time went on and samplers became more complex, so did their usage. In the UK, right around the time Straight Outta Compton is released, the rave scene there explodes, with musicians and DJs who used samplers in the Amen break to produce hardcore techno, raga jungle, and drum and bass. Jungle in particular, it being an amalgamation of reggae toasting, heavy bass lines, and high-speed breakbeats, centers its aesthetic almost entirely around the deconstruction of the Amen. This was done by slicing the original six-second sample into its individual drum hits. 
each snare drum, each bass drum, the hi-hats, the crash cymbal. The slices could then be rearranged and manipulated in any number of ways to create new patterns. Here's an earlier jungle artist. This is Shy FX's track, Original Nata, from 1994. And here's another by L Double and Younghead, titled New Style, from 1996. 